Hello, everybody. Stocks sold off on Tuesday. We'll start it off with the Russell 2000 as it was one of the better indexes. It found resistance right at the old January highs, so it was unable to get above them, and it's reversing. However, volume is lower today. Not only was the Russell 2000 reversing at those old highs, the NASDAQ hit its old highs, but actually reversed before hitting the old highs, which is also coinciding with the 50-day moving average, and pulled back today on lower volume. The S&P 500 and the Dow Jones Industrial Average both met resistance exactly at their 50-day moving averages before reversing. However, volume was lower today, so it's an inconclusive session, but what we need to be on the lookout for now is how this pullback plays out. If we continue to pull back on lower volume, and I see more and more stocks set up in bullish technical patterns. I'll be get more and more, I guess, pulled towards the long side. And I'll be looking to increase positions on the long side if they do work out. However, for right now, uh, there's a lot left to the imagination. There are very few good-looking patterns out there. And stocks are just trading all wrong. It's very, very difficult market to gain. Uh, Cray is one of the top stocks I want, but yet it just keeps slowly inching higher. BOP is even moving in the wrong direction. The longer it inches along in a wedging formation, the higher the odds are that it pulls back in a very violent fashion. XRS is doing the exact same thing. This other leading stock that I'm watching, BOP is going in the wrong direction as it wedges higher on lower volume. Overall, poor price action. And the best looking setup tonight is FRGI. And FRGI is, of course, making this move the day before earnings tomorrow after the closing bell. So overall, there is not a whole lot that looks good out there. And on that note, the bank stocks look like they're ready to hit new lows almost. JP Morgan is reversing on very heavy volume, unable to retake the 50-day moving average. Goldman Sachs looks very, very weak. There's been no accumulation on this bounce. Bank of America, Wells Fargo, similar situations. Morgan Stanley also reversing with a slight uptick in volume. Credit Suisse, Deutsche Bank, they still could be trying to find a floor, but, you know, the verdict's still out on those. And the SEF, the Pro Share Short Financial, gave me a quasi-possible long signal today. It's a little too deep in its overall pattern for me to take, and it's below the 10 and 20 day moving average. So I'll pass on that, but I do have a hedge I do want to take, and that's an RWM. RWM is a pro share short Russell 2000. Uh, it was looking pretty good today, and I was kind of happy about this signal until I went and I checked after hours, and I saw that. RWM is up to the 69 level. I refuse to chase it, and this gapping market is making it extremely difficult to trade as things gap all over the place. Um, entries are just very hard to come by, which is why I continue to trade very small. So RWM, if it decides to gap up above 6881 in the morning, which means that the, the ask and the bid both have to be above 6881 for me, if that is the case, half of this will be a market order, and I will keep half of a limit order on at 68.81. But as of right now, I have my limit order at 68.81 for 2.5% of my account capital in a stronger, more clear trending market, which is giving a more clear bear signal. Let's say the index is reversed on huge volume today, and I get this signal in RWM today. This is probably a 5% signal. But thanks to the volatility, the V shapes, the gaps, the sloppiness, and the overall terrible trading that this tape continues to offer us for the past year and two months, uh, this will be a 2.5% position. There is one long position I'm interested in sending buy stops on. However, as of right now, I'm not sure where the best level would be. I'm not going to always be around to be able to track it intraday, so I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I think I'll give it more of a time because the 20-day moving average and 10-day moving average still hasn't touched price yet. Minimum, I'm going to need to see the 10-day moving average touch price. So MGM will have to base at least one or two more days, and then I'll be looking to probably set buy stops above the 64 level, not 65 and maybe 69. I might even stagger it and have some buy stops at 64 with a move above it and some above 69. This is a speculative play, but it's one of the best coiling-looking gold stocks out there. 
And as you can see, if we just do a measured move from its previous low to previous high, we're looking at a 260% gain for about a 5 to 10% risk on the position. You just have to invest your capital accordingly. But besides that, there isn't a whole lot to go over. Uh, JBSS had, um, you know, this is one of the few perfect speculator scan quality names. But I tell you what, we got a long signal back here. And it's been weird trading ever since with the big reversal the next day. And then it tried to move higher but couldn't close near its highs. Same with the 18th, same with the 19th, and same with the 22nd. And then finally today you get a sell-off on above average volume with BOP, which was trending towards max stream BOP, falling significantly. The stock is still above the 10-day moving average, so it isn't really... I can't move my stops up to today's low a day, but what I can do is move my stops up to the 20-day moving average, which should be around the 61.50 level, and I'm going to keep my final stops at 58.67. However, you can be sure that if it moves below the 20-day moving average and triggers my first sell stop order, whatever the low a day of the session that goes below the 20-day moving average is, that will be my new final sell stop. But overall, um, pretty dull day, very, very dull day. The only exciting stock that we were tracking intraday was EYES, and we definitely did not see that second follow-through move coming today, and it all happened in the morning, so completely, completely missed. But besides this one, there just you know wasn't a whole lot. So that's it. The market is under a pullback. This is the important inflection point. We want to see how it pulls back, and volume starts picking up and we start getting distribution during this pullback, I'm going to say that we're going to eventually fail. We could try to bounce again higher, but I'd say that the February lows are in jeopardy unless we continue to pull back on low volume.